Hey everyone, it's Brayden here for GSHelper.com, and today I'm going to be talking about the new change scene behavior in the release candidate. Um, the release candidate contains all of the stuff we were talking about earlier about the new table functions, uh, text functions, and this new um, change scene behavior. So if you don't have this yet, you don't have to be pro, you can just go to the GameSolid website and download this, and then you can follow this tutorial. So, along with all the new functions and everything, we have a new change scene behavior. And it allows us to now change scene at an attribute value. Instead of just selecting it manually, we can now assign an attribute value uh, to that change scene behavior, and it'll change scene according to that value. Um, so to test this out and to show you what I mean, I'm going to create another scene, and we are going to go into the initial scene. And we're going to create an actor, and we're just going to call it test. Okay, we're going to open this up. And we want to change scene when we touch this actor, so we're going to create a rule and say when touch is pressed, drag the change scene behavior into the rule, and you'll see it looks a little different. We're going to disable enable advertisement, and if we click the go to scene button, you'll see that we have next scene, previous scene, which were both there before. And then we have all of our scenes in the project, but you'll see the new at indexed uh, option. So if we click that, it turns on the scene index part of this behavior, and we can link an attribute to this part. So what we need to do is actually create an attribute. So we're going to just create a self attribute. It's going to be an integer, and we're going to call it um, level change or something like that. Uh, now we need to set this to uh, a value because if we just change to scene 0 that won't do anything um, so let's change to scene 1 and this is I'm gonna just show you what happens here um, because this is what I did at first um, we're going to link the new self level change in here back out and drag it onto the scene great and we'll preview this and you'll see when we touch it nothing happens right well, actually, there is something happening. It's changing the scene, but it's changing scene to this scene. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, the index attribute will change the scene according to the scenes that are listed in the project. So if we change the scene 1, the initial scene is scene 1 because that's the very first scene in this project. Um, scene 1, as this is name, I'm going to just rename it so it's easier to... Um, see which one's which. Uh, we're going to call it uh, level 1. Okay. Um, so if we actually go back into the initial scene, again, this is actually changing to scene 1, and that was the scene that we were just on. Uh, but if we change this to the number 2, you'll see that it changes to level 1, which is the second scene in this project. And Granted, this is a great feature. It's going to save tons of time. But if you have a hundred scenes in your project, you know you have a initial scene or or maybe a splash screen, a load scene, a main menu, world select, level select, and then all of your levels start. This feature would come in handy when you had a level select. So now you don't actually have to open up every actor and tell the change scene behavior what to change to you can just link an attribute to that but you're gonna have to determine and figure out yourself how many scenes over you know level one is so let's say level one is actually scene ten so you would link ten to that attribute so it changed to level one but it would actually be scene ten um, and so that's nice and everything um, but it just is it's a little tedious to have to do in your head and everything so um, I found two ways to get around this to kind of calculate the um, the difference between the scenes and so we're actually going to be able to change scene depending on the scene name and the scene number um, so this video might be a little long but hopefully you'll stick around and watch it it is hopefully um, informative to you guys um, so first off I'm gonna create um, five more scenes so we have a total of seven and we're, we already have initial scene which I'm gonna rename to um, level select and we already have level one, the third scene, or this new scene that we just created, I'm going to call level two. 
and the next one I'm going to call level 3. And then this third scene I'm going to just call 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we should have level select, level 1, level 2, level 3, 1, 2, 3. Great. Okay, so now we're going to go into the tables tab and we're going to create two tables. We're going to name the first one uh, M1 for method 1, uh, scene names. And we're going to name the second one M2, scene names. So we're going to go into the first one, and this table is going to change scene depending on the scene name. So we have seven scenes total. So we need to create seven rows. And these are going to be text. And so we are going to name the first one level select because that's the very first scene in this project. We're going to name the second one level one, the third one level two, the fourth one level three. Now it's very important to make sure that these names that you're inputting in here match exactly what the scene names are. So if you want you can even just double click, copy the scene names, go into the table and paste it in there to make sure you've got it right. Now because level 5, 6, and 7 are just named 1, 2, and 3, we don't really need to name these. Uh, for this example, we're just going to you know, put some uh, random letters in there because we're not going to be changing to these three. We're only going to be worried about the first four. Okay, so we're going to go back home and into the scenes. I'm going to go into the level select. I'm going to delete the actor that we did have, and we're going to create a brand new actor. And we're going to go ahead and name this uh, M1 Scene Change. Okay, so we need to create two self attributes. The first one is going to be a text attribute, and the second one is going to be an integer attribute. For the text attribute, we're going to call it Scene Name, and we're going to give it a scene to change to, or a scene name that we're going to be changing to. Um, so let's change to level two. And remember, you have to match exactly what the scene is actually named. The integer attribute we created, we're going to call scene location. And you don't need to set that to anything right now. Uh, let's go ahead and add a display text behavior. And we're just going to call this uh, method one, just so we know uh, which button is which, because eventually at the end of the tutorial, we'll have two different methods. And so we're going to need to figure out which button is which. I'm um, going to change the size a little bit. All right, so we're going to add a change scene behavior to this logic stack. And we're going to change self scene location to table search. And if I'm going to be going through this pretty quickly, so if you don't understand how the table search function works or how to set it up properly, uh, we have video tutorials up on our YouTube page or on our website, gshelper.com. Feel free to go watch that and understand how this works and then come back and finish this up. So for the table, we're going to do game uh, m1 scene names for method1 scene names. The key, this is what we're searching for, so we're going to go self um, scene name. And we are searching a column, so remove everything except uh, the col. Target row column, uh, 1, start range 1, end range, we're going to do table row count. For the table, we're going to go game m1 scene names. And we're going to find the exact match. So remove all this and input exact. OK, now we're going to create a rule. And we're going to say when touch is pressed, we're going to change scene at index to scene location, which is self scene location. OK, so what this is actually doing, it is changing the scene location, which is an integer. So it's going to give it a value. And it's looking for, in the table, the scene name which happened to be level 2 and remember we matched these up according to the scenes that actually showed up in the project file um, so level 2 is actually the third scene in this project and if we go into the table you'll see in the third row it is level 2 which is correct so what this should do is we're gonna drag it on it should change us to that scene which is level 2 um, and so that we know we change scenes, I'm just going to call this test, uh, test actor, <laughs> and we're going to go into level 2 scene, drag this on, and we're just going to display in this act actor uh, level 2. 
give it a quick color. Okay, so if we press preview and we click this button, you'll see it takes us to level two, which is right here, um, which is actually the third scene over, but this it automatically calculated the uh, difference and uh, it took us to that scene. So if you wanted to change this, all you have to do is go into the actor and change the scene name attribute. So if we wanted to change to scene three, we can do that, preview, and you'll see it takes us to scene three. We don't have an actor on here displaying what the scene name is, but you'll see that the button is gone, so we have indeed changed scenes. Okay, so um, one thing to remember with this method is to update your table after your game is complete, so you make sure that you have as many rows as you do uh, scenes, and that you make sure that these all match up. Um, so if you have more than three levels, you would go ahead and add in the rest. Um, and you should be good to go with that method. All right, let's move on to method two. Uh, we're going to go into the table, into M2 scenes, the new table, uh, or the table we created we haven't filled out yet. We're going to create um, seven rows because we have seven scenes, and we're just going to give the first four some odd numbers because we don't need to change to those at all. Uh, for this demo, we're just worrying about the 5, 6, and 7 because this is for method 2. So 5, that scene is named 1, 6 is named 2, and 7 is named 3. Again, you can go back into the scenes and you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The, five, the fifth scene over is named 1, 2, and 3. Great. Let's go into the level select and we're going to create another actor and we're going to name it M2 Scene Change. go into the actor, and we're going to create only one self-attribute, and this is going to be, again, uh, scene location. And uh, let's give this a value, so let's go to level 3. And again, this has to match the number of the scenes, so 3 is right here, uh, so we want to change to the last scene in the project. So we're going to uh, grab a change attribute and we're going to drag it to the top of the logic stack. We're going to go self, scene location, to table search. Table is going to be method two scene names. The key is actually going to be this self attribute. Um, even though we're changing the value of this self attribute, it, it already has the initial value that we gave it, which is three. Um, and so that's going to be the key. Now we are searching a column again, so remove everything except the COL. Target row column is going to be 1, start range is going to be 1, end range is going to be table row count, table is going to be M2 scene names, and we're going to find the exact match. Once that's done, click the green check mark to enter the expression, and we're going to create a rule that says when touch is pressed, change scene at index to self scene location. And we're going to add just a display text behavior to the top of the logic stack so we know which button this is. Uh, I'm just going to name it M2. We'll back out and drag this actor onto the scene. And we're going to go uh, for testing purposes to the last scene, which is the one we're trying to change to. And I'm going to drag the test behavior or actor onto the screen and actually just go ahead and unlock this. You wouldn't do this in your game. I'm just doing this for the tutorial. Don't do this because <laughs> uh, it can get really confusing. Um, we're just going to name it 3. So if we press preview, let's test out method 1 again. It takes us to uh, level 3. If we restart and we do M2, it takes us to the third scene, or the third level, which would be the seventh scene. Um, so this is a really cool and effective way to change scene and, and pretty much offset the value of the change scene behavior at the index uh, attribute. So that way you don't have to manually go and count one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I need to change to scene five, which is level one. Because uh, that can get really confusing, especially if you have you know, a couple dozen levels in your game. So I hope this has been informative. Again, once your game is done, make sure to go to the tables and update the tables, the rows, how many ever levels you have or scenes you have. 
uh, and make sure those are all filled out correctly. Um, I hope this has been informative, and we'll see you guys in the next video.